welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. I am Christian Harlow. And I'm John Campia. All right, John, so look, this is the Inner Geekdom Fatal Five-Way Match. It's not for a title, it's not even for the number one contender, but it is very important. It is a very important thing because the league, the Inner Geekdom League, it's, there are very few matches we have, but they are all relevant. It's, it comes down to this. The winner of this match is going to be very well positioned. Yes, we know we've got Hector. Yes, we know we got Robert Meyer Burnett. But who's going to add their name to that upper echelon in this division? Well, that's the point. Is Whoever wins this plays Robert Meyer Burnett, the former champion. There are a lot of people here who want to do that. There are some rookies in here who want to make a name for themselves. There are some old pros in here who want to do some stuff and make some noise in the inner geekdom division. And we can tell you all about that. But why not hear it from the competitors themselves? That's right, folks. I'm back. And all the awesome tacular nerdy glory. This is actually just me. I've shed the layers of bullshit. This is the inner me. Because I didn't win last time. And I'm fine with losing to questions I don't know the answers to. Not as much okay with losing to questions I know the answers to, but give the wrong and dumb fucking answer. So I, I need a mulligan. As we say in Magic the Gathering, I'm doing a mulligan. Well, hello, Schmodown fans. We're here at the Inner Gate. And I'm Ken Napsuck of the Nerds Watch. You know my tag team partner, Rachel the Crusher Cushing. Hello, Schmodown fans. I'm happy to be back. In her first performance, she dominated. Feels pretty good to be back in the squared circle known as the Schmodown, specifically Inner Geekdom Edition. Today, I can only hope that I am at the height of my powers and that my performance touches something known as iconic. Hailing frequencies open, everybody. That's right. I went and challenged Robert Meyer Burnett and Hector Navarro, and they turned me down because they were scared of me. Oh. Sit your ass down until you win some more matches until you are worthy. <laughs> well, I am finally here because I am going to prove that the best geek out there needs to win the Inner Geekdom Championship. The Nerds Watch has expanded. I'm introducing now Mad Dog Michelle. Boy. Woo! That's right. That's Woo! right. You're competing against each other today, but really, we're competing to bring back heroes. Take it away. Thank you, Ken. My, my pleasure to be here. I'm here to show you what it's like to walk in the light, to not feel the power of the dark side. I'm looking forward to taking you on, Rachel. I've seen you before. I know you're a formidable opponent. If someone had watched the Fatal Five Way last time, they kind of know how it's going to go down. But I will say this, as always, you can know the answers, but when the lights hit you, it's a different thing entirely. Then you start saying things like, oh yeah, William Shatner didn't direct Star Trek V. I host a show called Tournament of Nerds at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. I am a face on the Screen Junkies channel, so I just hope I can make my brethren proud and make my competition. What rhymes with proud? My fellow competitors, I'm gonna throw out a quick apology to you right now because I'm sorry, I'm not gonna miss a single question and you won't ever get a chance to answer and you're just gonna walk away and walk away. I'll give you a handshake, maybe a hug, but you're just gonna walk out of the ring. And I'm sorry for that, but it needs to happen for justice. Rachel and Michelle are here to compete in the inner geekdom, and they're stepping over you to get to Hector. Inmen, more like outmen. Boyd, you're going to avoid the next round. Jeremy Johns, you're gonna be a pawn in the game. Cushing, I'm pushing you out of the way. And Rudnick, Nothing rhymes with Rudnick, mic drop. Studnick. The nerds are the kings of the world, man. I, I fight for the, like Tron before me, I fight for the users because all of you out there, all you inner nerds, you are all awesome-tacular. Okay, look, now you look at all that, that crew there, and everybody here has a story. As we just saw, Ken Knapsack, it has obviously his partner, Rachel, the crusher Cushing, who had a great showing in yes, the team match, and really knows her geek stuff. I mean, she, I've known Rachel for a very long time, and she knows this stuff. But how about Ken throwing, throwing in that, that little wrinkle here, Michelle Boyd. 
Michelle Boyd, Mad Dog Boyd now coming in here, and she is now part of the Nerds Watch. Look at Ken. What's he doing? <laughs> well, Ken has got his own little schemes and machinations, yeah. as he always does. And look, you got a couple of more... If you want to call them seasons, you got Jason Inman, no stranger to the movie trivia showdown. You, of course, got Jeremy Johns, who has been in one of these Fatal matches five, before. The only guy to do it in the spectacular. But now they've got some curveballs coming at them and some rookies in here that they don't know what to expect. It could throw them off their game. And the icon, Hal Rudnick, making his return. We haven't seen Hal in almost a year since he lost to Sam Levine, but now he's back. But I think all eyes are on Jason Inman in this one. I think because Jason Inman has, you know, he challenged to be in that title match against Burnett. And and Navarro, they didn't allow him to do it. He wanted to be in the Fatal Five with the Spectacular. It didn't happen because of his team match that night. Um, and he still lets me know about that often. So now, here he is. He's in it. He really wants a shot at Burnett. So it really is on, uh, it's all on his back right now. And you have Jeremy Johns, who also just wants to have fun. But Jeremy knows his stuff. Very interested to see what happens here tonight. I have played many games of Magic the Gathering and X-Wing miniatures with Jeremy Johns. I can tell you, he is incredibly competitive. He wants to go in there. Does he want to have fun? That's his number one concern, but does he want to win? Absolutely. Well, I know somebody who does know a lot about winning. It is the former five-time world champion, WCW world champion, Booker T, with his keys to victory right now. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Dig it, sucker. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Booker T, five-time WCW champ, back again right here on the Schmodown. And this week, guys, we have Fatal Five-Way Action in the Inner Geek Division. Now, we got five strong competitors as well looking to shake it all up. We got Michelle Boyd, Rachel Cushing, Hal Budnick, Jason Inman, and Jeremy Jazz here to do their thing. Now, the Inner Geek Division is no joke. You gotta know your Harry Potter, your Lords of the Ring, your Star Wars comic book movies, all of that. And we got some rookies in this thing this week. I don't know how well they're gonna do, but they better just bring it here on the Smowdown. You know, I think in the end, it's gonna come down to Jason Inman and Jeremy Jazz. But the person that's gonna get that title shot in the end versus Burnett. It's gonna be my boy, ah, Jason Inman. Now, can you dig that here on the Schmodown? Now, guys, don't forget to get your weekly fix of Reality of Wrestling downloaded every Sunday on YouTube. The best show on YouTube, Reality of Wrestling. Now, can you dig it, sucker? And Booker. Booker also thinks that Inman's got a shot to win this thing. Very interesting. I'm ready to go here. Are you ready to go? We are ready to go. And we're going to see, was Jason Inman justified in demanding that title shot and getting into that title shot? Or was Robert Meyer Burnett justified in sending him away? Well, we're going to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. <laughs> Fatal five-way for the Inner Geekdom Division. Introducing first... Representing the Nerds Watch, making her Schmodown debut, she is the Mad Dog, Michelle Boy. Oh, a little light. Oh, here we go. Like, oh, we're stepping He's out. Coming out. Nonchalant. Oh, oh, and Ken Ken's, Ken's coming out, out with her. The manager slash competitor walking out with Michelle Boy. Very nice. I like what Ken Napsok's doing here. He has, he's, he's, he's put war on the villains of the Schmodown League, and he's doing it with some heroes. And look, he just walks off casually. Michelle Boyd is here. He's Mad following the example of Finstock. If you can't win something on your own, put together a team that can. Contestant number two. Representing Screen Junkies with a record of zero wins, one defeat. He is the icon, Hal Rodney. And Hal is back. Hal's got job. And Hal is back. It's good to see Rodney.
It's back. always good to have Hal Rudnick in the house. You see him involved in a match like this. This is where he belongs. I think he's going to feel right at home in this division. Petty Jamba like a Bond villain. I like what he's doing there. He walks over. He, oh, he gives a high five to Michelle Boyd. Very nice. I like that. Okay, the, the icon is back. And contestant number three, representing the Nerds Watch, making her inner geekdom debut. She is Rachel, the Crusher, Kushi. Oh, coming out to that! Oh, oh coming out to the Lord of the Rings it. Elven music. That's the way to do it. And there's Ken again. Uh, <laughs> Ken again. Now Ken now. Ken now is now walking Rachel Cushing. The Nerds Watch making an impact on the inner geekdom division. Nerds can be geeks. Well, already Ken making a presence for himself in this matchup. I like what we're doing here. All right. Contestant number four. Representing Team Trek. With a record of one win, two defeats, he is Jason Justice. Inman. And oh, here comes no. Inman. The favorite to win this thing. Jason Justice Inman. Walking, he's got some kind of reveal. Oh, he's really oh, very nice. The next second. The crowd likes Justice. The crowd likes Justice. You know, Jason's been making a lot of noise in the team division with Team Trek. Can very he carry close. that over now into the inner geekdom division? Jason Justice Inman was two seconds away from being team champion. Let's see how he does in the inner geekdom. All right. And finally, Contestant number five, representing Awesome Tacular, with a record of zero wins, one defeat. He is the Joker, Jeremy Jones. The saber Oh, uh, here he comes, dripping water, on the spilling floor, water like everywhere, sipping it up. Oh, and oh, oh, and he's got the saber. He points it over to the judges. He does a little curtsy. He's got the hand of the kingpin holding on his Star Wars blanket. If that was a real lightsaber, you would have cut your arm off. <laughs> <laughs> I would have cut my cape off. It yeah. would have saddened me. All right, so I'm ready to get this thing going. This is this is look, all the contestants are ready to go. Here are the rules. Round number one, there will be eight questions from eight random categories in the geek world. You guys will write your answers down. You'll have 15 seconds to answer when it is time. When it is your time to reveal, please reveal your whiteboard and say it at the same time. Each one will be worth one point. At the end of this round, the person with the least amount of points will be eliminated. Is so everybody, you got the rules, everybody good to go. <laughs> All right, competitors, here we go. Round number one. In the category of Marvel films, why does Peter Parker want the prize money from the wrestling competition for in Spider-Man? Why does Peter Parker want the prize money from the wrestling competition for in Spider-Man? Not a lot of hesitation up there. Everybody went right no. to the boards. They're writing it out. Yeah, they're all. I mean, look, there's a lot of people up there with their strengths comic book movies. So this is going to be very interesting. Five, four, three, two, one. Michelle. I had no idea, so I said to buy a pony. That is incorrect. incorrect. Hal Rudnick. A uh, new costume. That is incorrect. incorrect. Uh, we have Rachel. To buy a car to impress Mary Jane. That's correct. correct. Ah. Point. Jason. To buy a car to impress Mary Jane. That's correct. correct. Yeah. Jeremy. I said to buy a car. Uh, we'll, that's correct. We'll accept that, yeah. yes. <laughs> all right. All right. So Jeremy, Rachel, and Inman all getting that correct. All right, John, number two. All right, guys. Your second question in the universe of Star Wars. Why didn't the Empire fire on the escape pod housing C-3PO and R2-D2 at the beginning of A New Hope? I think you would have gotten this question. I think I probably might have uh, eked this one out. I think Kenny might have got this one, too. Five, four, three, two, one pen's down. Hal Rudnick. Uh, to keep uh, info safe. That's incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> Rachel. There were no life signs aboard. Th that's correct. correct. For pushing Jason. No life signs. That's correct. correct, Jeremy. There were no life signs. That's correct, correct. Michelle. There were no life forms. That's correct. correct. That's correct. Life okay. Forms on board. Michelle, okay. So right Ooh. now, Hal Rudnick needs a point here. Category of Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Who composed the score for Iron Man 3, Thor, The Dark World, and Age of Ultron? Who composed the score for Iron Man 3, Thor The Dark World, and Age of Ultron? 
Now, scores and soundtracks are very difficult very tough. topic for a lot of different competitors. We've seen Bibiani himself be taken down by this category. It's very different here. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Rachel Cushing. Henry Jackman, it's not right. That's incorrect. Jason. Brian Tyler. That's correct for one point. Jeremy. A kid on MTV Movie Maker. <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> Michelle. Hans Zimmer. That's incorrect. And how? Um, Hans Zimmer. That's incorrect. <laughs> so Jason Inman, the only one to get that one right. All right, John. All right, guys, we now move over to the topic of Harry Potter. What was the name of the Defense Against the Dark Arts professor in the Sorcerer's Stone? Can be tricky. This is a film franchise. I had several professors hold that position. What I've realized from hearing this, I'd be terrible at this. <laughs> Five, really count? four, no. No, not good. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down. Jason Inman. Quirrell. Correct. Wow. wow. Jeremy. Quirrell. That's correct. correct. Michelle. Quirrell and Voldemort. That's correct. Oh. All right. Technically true. Technically That's correct. correct. I did that. That, that, is that. that is correct. That is correct. Rodney. Um, I said gluteus maximus. <laughs> <laughs> and Rachel. Quirrell. Correct. That's correct. Okay, there we wow. go. Wow, that was really <laughs> big. Oh, man. Look, Jason Inman has not missed. All right, here we go. In the category of Lord of the Rings, in Fellowship of the Ring, what shape did Gandalf's pipe weed smoke take as he and Bilbo were talking before Bilbo's birthday party? In Fellowship of the Ring, what shape did Gandalf's pipe weed smoke take as he and Bilbo were talking before the birthday party? And I see some people thinking hard up there. Fine. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Jeremy Johns. A ship. That's correct. Sorry. Michelle. Badass pirate ship. That's correct. Oh. correct. <laughs> I said a ring wraith. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Rachel Cushing. A ship. That's correct. correct. Jason. Sailing ship. That's correct. correct. All right. So there we go. Woo! Jason Emmons sailing Woo! through. All right. Next question. In the category of DC movies, who played... The Raz Agul impersonator in the first half of Batman Begins. Who played the Raz Agul impersonator in the first half of Batman Begins? Now, how Spoilers. Must well, must yeah. answer this question correctly, <sighs> yes. and he has to hope that Michelle Boyd answers incorrectly. Correct. <sighs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Michelle Boyd. This is probably wrong and possibly <clears throat> racist. Chow Yun Fat. That is incorrect, incorrect. Okay. But, not, but not racist. <laughs> How Rudnick? Um, Ken Tanaka. <clears throat> That's incorrect. incorrect. Rachel. Ken Watanabe. That's correct. Yes. Ah, Jason. Ken Watanabe. That's, That's correct. correct. And Jeremy. Yeah, I said Watanabe. That's yeah. Ken correct. Watanabe. Correct. That is correct. Watanabe. <laughs> but because, <laughs> that, because Hal Rudnick did not score, this round is over. Uh, Hal Rudnick has been eliminated. Uh, you know what? An honor just to be here. Uh, Al Rudnick has been eliminated. Had a little bit of a rough start there. <laughs> Jeremy giving him the lightsaber salute. Yeah. Sending him off. A great round for yeah. Jason Inman and Jeremy Johns and that. Cushing. I mean, this has been big. an impressive round. Now all the points will be reset, and the competitors will once again start with zero Ooh, as we get into round number two. A little different. The competitors will have 10 questions. 10 questions Ooh. in round number two. And at the end of the round, the competitor with the least amount of points will be eliminated. All right, folks, your first question in round number two starts off in the category of Star Trek. What hymn did Scotty play on the bagpipes as Spock's body was sent into space at the end of Star Trek II? Mm. He was a musical fella. Yeah, he sure was, John. I like that, that guy. He's pretty good. All right, five. Four, three, two, one, pens down, and Michelle. The Hokey Pokey. That is incorrect. incorrect. Rachel. <laughs> Amazing Grace. That's correct for one point, Jason. He played Amazing Grace. That's correct, correct. Jeremy. Amazing Grace. Wow. Correct. That. Okay. But for the record, I think Michelle yes. Boyd's version would have been that more would have been entertaining. Interesting. Yeah, yes. for sure. All right, next question in the category of DCEU. What was written on the jar that was placed in front of Holly Hunter at the Senate hearing in Batman vs. Superman? Yeah. So, I mean, all these competitors playing really solid right now. And all of them looking pretty confident. I've done this. Yeah. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Rachel. Auntie Pauline Sweet Tea? That's incorrect. Jason. Grandma Sweet Tea. Damn it. 
Grandma Sweet Tea? Incorrect. incorrect. Ooh, Jeremy. I know what it is then. Granny's Peach Tea. That's correct. That's correct. Oh, wow. And Michelle. Robots versus zombies. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Johns here taking the lead now. Big round for wait, Jeremy. Wait, can you say that again? <laughs> Jeremy Johns taking the lead now. All right. All right, next category. All right, guys, your next question in round number two. Once again, comes to you from the category of Star Trek. Who composed the score for Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, and Star Trek Insurrection? Who composed the score for Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, and Star Trek Insurrection? Right now, it seems to be a battle. You wrote that pretty fast, Emmett. Jason, I have that soundtrack. John's and, and, and Emmett. This is <laughs> pushing tight. not too far behind. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and Jason. The late, great Jerry Goldsmith. That's correct for one point. Jeremy. That was one. Uh, that says Howard Shore, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's incorrect. Michelle. I was just hoping this would be right at some point. Hans, Hans Zimmer. <laughs> <laughs> and Rachel. Jerry Goldsmith. That's correct. Correct. Rachel, correct. Tying it up here. All right. Here we go. We have and a three-way tie for the lead right now. In the category of Marvel Cinematic Universe, in Iron Man 3, what popular animated TV character was on the watch Harley gave to Tony? In Iron Man 3, what popular animated TV character was on the watch Harley gave to Tony? I am going to be. Now, I've watched Iron Man 3 many times, so I'm going to be impressed they get this if one. a couple of them can pull this one we'll off. We'll see. And five, four, three, two, one. Jeremy Johnson. Powerpuff Girls? That's incorrect. Damn. Michelle? Mickey Mouse? Incorrect. Correct. Rachel? Dora the Explorer? That's correct. correct. Oh, oh, shit. Jason. Dang. Wow. wow. Rachel, pushed Rachel out. gets that one. That was big. Yeah, big Rachel. pop from the crowd well here. Done. Your next yes. question in the category of Star Wars. <gasps> in A New Hope, what did R2-D2 claim had short-circuited his recording system? In A New Hope, what did R2-D2 claim had short-circuited his recording system? Now, we had some debate before the match as to whether the contestant should answer this in R2's language. Well, you're right, but yes. that didn't work out no. very well. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Jason Nimmin. Is it the restraining bolt? That's correct. correct. <gasps> Jeremy Johns. What? I, restraining bolt. That's correct. correct. <gasps> Michelle. I said restriction bolt. Ooh. Ooh. I, I can't give it to her. Can't give it. Okay. <laughs> and Rachel. I meant that I said dust. Okay, no, so there you go. <laughs> Question number six. In the world of DC movies, what is Harvey Dent's campaign slogan in the Dark Knight? What is Harvey Dent's campaign slogan in the Dark Knight? That's slow. Mm -hmm. Man, this, is ha this has been an absolute battle so far. Five, four, three, two, one pens down, please, Michelle. Still better than the Joker. That's incorrect. <laughs> Rachel. Shine a light. Incorrect. Jason. I believe in Harvey Dent. That's correct, correct. for one oh, point. Done. And Jeremy. It's I before E, right? That's yeah. correct. That's right. <laughs> All right, so Michelle is still did. in this, though, because yeah. Rachel missed that question. All right, here we go. All right, folks, your seventh question in round number two comes to you in the category of Harry Potter. Who taught herbology at Hogwarts during Harry's time there as a student? This is another one where I'm going to be very yeah. impressed. Is it herbology or herbology? <laughs> herbology. Okay. All right, five. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Who taught herbology at Hogwarts during Harry's time there as a student? You'll have five, four, three, two, one. Rachel? Professor Sprout. That's correct, correct. for one point. Jason. Uh, the correct answer is Flickwick. That's incorrect. <laughs> Jeremy. I think McGonagall did everything. That's incorrect. <laughs> Michelle. Finally, Professor Sprout. Sprout. Correct. <laughs> right. so, okay, next question. Category of Lord of the Rings. What is the name of the path that leads to Shelob's lair in Return of the King? And spelling counts. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's tough to spell. I'm, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to predict that none of them get this. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong? Yeah, I think okay. there's some Lord of the Rings super geeks up there. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Jason Inman. The Dark Pass. That's incorrect. Uh, Jeremy Johns. The Dark Path. 
That is also, also incorrect. incorrect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kirith Ungol. That's correct. Correct oh, to stay yeah. alive. <laughs> Michelle needed that to yeah. stay alive, and Rachel. she nails it. Rachel. Kirith Ungol. That's Woo! correct. Wow. All right. All right. So. Not one, but two so. of them got it. <laughs> All right. All right. Two more questions left in this round. <laughs> All right. And we are still in a situation where Michelle must answer out. She must get these next two answers. Yes. All right. Question number nine. In the category of the DCEU, what kind of candy does Lex Luthor feed to another character in Batman versus Superman? Yeah. Man, that really... Very well-known scene for probably all the wrong reasons. That A lot scene, of people not happy with that I scene. I know, that particular scene wasn't the best. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Jason Inman. Jolly Rancher's hard candy. That's correct. correct. Jeremy. Jelly Rancher. That's correct. No one likes those Michelle. things. Pop Rocks. Uh, incorrect. Uh, incorrect. And Rachel. Jelly Rancher. That is correct. correct. And with that, Michelle Boyd oh. has been eliminated. But a nice showing for nice her show. first yeah. time out. She didn't get, I think, I think she was looking for Harry Potter. She was looking for Lord of the Rings. It was a good, it was a good oh, yeah. showing there for sure. Well done. Well done, Batman Beyond. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we are, round number three. There are three competitors left. The competitors will spin the wheel. Each competitor will have a chance to spin the wheel, whatever category they land on. If they don't like the first category they get, they can choose to spin again. They will get four questions in the round. Each one will be worth two points apiece, unless they go to multiple choice. Now, the other two competitors can steal in this round. They will have to buzz in after they hear myself or John say incorrect. If they know the answer, they can steal. Now, whether or not it's up to two points or one point is up to the person who spins the wheel. All right, Rachel, you're up first. Please give it a good spin. You had the most points in the last round. The points are reset, but you had six in the last round, so you can go first. Strong spin. That's a strong oh, that spin. Is a strong there it is. Spin. And it's going to land on. DCEU. DC nope. No, she wants to spin oh, again. Instantly. <laughs> nope. She's shooting for Lord now, of the Rings. She will have to take whatever she spins now. And it's going to land on Harry, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. She likes Harry Potter. She is not upset by that. She likes Harry Potter. All right. All right, here we go, Rachel. You're up. Four questions in the world of Harry Potter. All right, your first question Who took on the post of Potions Master at Hogwarts in The Half Blood Prince? Professor Slughorn. Wow. Correct. <laughs> That's correct. For two points. Wow. Wow. <laughs> two points for Rachel. Okay. And uh, Jeremy and Jason can start packing. <laughs> All right. Your second question in the category of Harry Potter. Who killed Voldemort's snake that held a piece of his soul in the Deathly Hollows Part 2? Neville Longbottom. That's correct. correct for, for two another more two points. points. Wow. Rachel pushing here. This, she, she knew that she was confident, and it shows why. All right. Your third question in Harry Potter. What enchanted instrument puts the terrifying three-headed dog to sleep in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? A harp. Wow, Correct Rachel for two Christian. points. She is running she is the board. She is making it very tough here for the other two competitors. It's going to be between Johns and Inman to stay alive in a second. All right, your final question in Harry Potter. Who plays Professor Lupin in the Harry Potter series? David Thewlis. Wow. Correct. That's she correct. runs the board. That is a correct. A perfect round two. Wow. So Rachel Cushing pretty much just, unless unless both Johns and Minden have perfect rounds here. <laughs> One of them are going home. Well, yeah, absolutely. No okay. Problem. All right. So now, Jason Inman, you are up. You're the second amount of points so far in this game. Here we go. Big spin, please. There's the spin from Inman. Inman's oh, looking for Star spin. Trek. Inman is looking for Star He's Trek here. It. Needs to hit it, and it's going to land on what's oh, right around there. It's close. And Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Go ahead. Jeremy is hoping he takes it. So is Rachel. <laughs> is he going to stick with it? He's spinning He's the spinning from again. It. Wow. All right. You know, he because he knows if he lands on Star Trek, he can run the table, he too. He can. He's going for that. He needs Star Trek here. Lands on opponent's, opponent's choice. choice. Can we confer? So now, what, what's that? I you, guess they can confer. They can confer. All right. They can confer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> they can confer which one they oh, want to do. Oh, now he's thinking he wishes he stayed now, on Lord see, of the Rings. Now, see, it's very interesting here because Rachel Cushing could make it difficult on Jeremy Johns because she, if she buzzes in on stuff that he misses, that's true. Then it would take away from Jeremy's points. She could also sit back and let them battle. It's up to her. Yeah, at this point, Rachel is unbeatable, really. Well, not point. not necessarily. Not technically. Right. Not technically. All right, I need a decision here in five, four, three, two, one. Rachel, what are you giving him? 
Lord of the Rings. Lord he of the Rings. He's going to take Lord of the Rings is as going it to is. Be taken. All right. Jason, you're up for Lord of the Rings here. Now remember, guys, in order, if you want to steal, you have to wait for me or, or John to say incorrect before you buzz in. Okay. Jason, who cut the ring from Sauron's hand? Multiple choice. Is it A, Hurin, B, Elrond, C, Thorin, D, Isildur? Isildur. That's correct. Correct. For one for point. One point. Okay. That was a smart move. Smart play from Jason. Knows he's in, a, he's in the ocean with sharks right now. <laughs> All right. Jason, how many rings were given to the dwarf lords? Multiple choice. Is it A, three, B, five, C, seven, D, nine? Three. It's incorrect. Rachel Cushman. Seven. That's correct. Correct. One point. <laughs> Jeremy needed that point. Jeremy needed that to, to get tied up with him, and Rachel stole it from him. Rachel's make, making everyone's life miserable in this game. All right. What was the name of Saruman's tower in the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Isengard. Incorrect. Rachel. Orthanc. That's correct. Correct. One more Rachel point. Rachel is Cushing. just destroying this Rachel category. Rachel Cushing is really breaking Jeremy Johns' chops here because <laughs> Jeremy, all, he knows. To be fair, I know the answer. He knows the answer. <laughs> what I'm saying. He knows the answers, and he could have gotten up on some points, but Rachel's stealing them away. Uh, all the right. Last time I confer with you. Question. <laughs> it was my answer. Question idea. number four. In the two towers, according to Aragorn. How many uruk soldiers were marching on Helm's Deep? Multiple choice. Is it A, 10,000, B, 5,000, C, 20,000, D, 30,000? 10,000? That's correct. Whoa. All right, so Jason Inman, though, gets himself two points. Obviously a rough, rough time there in that wheel round. Now, Jeremy Johns is up. Huh. If Jeremy oh, Johns, right. yeah, you're up. My heart's beating. <laughs> Jeremy just needs Pace three points. Jeremy, Jeremy just like, needs, no. well, not, no. yeah, but, no, 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 right. No, no, Jeremy no, needs no, no, three no, no, points no. here. I'm going to be like the wheel. Nobody, Jason, unless Jason can steal Jason a few. Jason can steal some, too. But Jeremy needs a category he is confident in. But Lord of the Rings is off the table, as is Harry Potter. All right, here's the spin. Ah. Big spin, and Ooh. Jeremy. Well, we know what Jeremy's looking for. Jeremy. Either is, Star Wars or yeah, porn. Yeah, Jeremy needs Star Wars or <laughs> pornography. And it's landing on DC movies. DC movies, not the DCEU, but the DC movies. DC movies, not DCEU. Correct. This is a decision. This is a big decision. Is a big make. decision. Does he stay there? Does he shoot for Star Wars again with the risk of hitting something he might not like? It's a very hard decision here, John. What does he do? Really want that. Where were you? <laughs> he's still on there. Five. What do you, he's, he's, go with it. he's going he's with taking it. Wow. it. He's going with it. All right. We'll do it. So in the category of DC movies, not DCEU, but DC movies. All right. All right. Jeremy, your first question in the category of DC movies. Yeah. What kind of vehicle did the Joker escape in after his bank heist at the beginning of the Dark Knight? A school bus. Correct, Correct. for two Jeremy points. Jeremy Johnson's ah. tied up Inman now. Was that supposed to be a geeky question? <laughs> it's part of the Dark Knight. Yes, it's part of the Dark Knight, Mr. Inman. All right, Jeremy, your yep. second question. Okay. What is Penguin's human name in Batman Returns? Cobblepot. Correct for nice. two points. Correct. <laughs> Jeremy, your third question in the category of DC movies. Okay. What former child star played editor Perry White in 1978's Superman? Hmm. Yeah, by a good one, you mean a hard one. <laughs> um, Five, four, three, two. Jason Inman. Incorrect. No multiple choice. In incorrect. Incorrect. In oh, Open for a steal. Choice. I totally forgot about that. Actually, that probably no one, no one I've never been this far, Jason. <laughs> incorrect. I've never no, been this so far. No one's going for the steal. Okay. No. All, right. All right. The answer we're looking for. Sorry was Jackie Cooper. Sorry, bro, oh, we're not old Jackie as fuck Cooper. like you. Wow, I don't Jay know what to say. Here's what it comes down to. If Jeremy misses this and Jason Inman can can steal it, then Jason Inman is still in the game. If not, Jeremy Johnson will I look forward to seeing you go on. Here we go. Multiple choice is a thing. I know that. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Your final question in the category of DC. In the course of his career, Adam West appeared as Batman opposite various actresses as Catwoman, which actress portrayed Catwoman in the 1966 movie? Multiple choice. 
Is it A, Arthur Kitt, B, Lee Merriweather, C, Julie Numar, D, Jill St. John? So basically all the cat women, like, it's, you know, there's no real buzz. I'm going to say Julie Newmar. Incorrect. Jason. Lee Merriweather. That it's is correct, correct for one but point. However, because Jeremy went to multiple choice, Jason Inman has been eliminated. <laughs> wow. Inman doesn't make it through. And Rachel Cushing has really stolen the dreams from Inman, I would say. Well, Jason <laughs> gives the double birds to the wheel. I mean, that's what happens. You can yeah. be on a Rachel, roll you and you can run into that yeah. wheel. And you know what, the opponents, they were <laughs> wise, they gave him a category they knew he was shaky on. <laughs> and and of course, points. Cushing knew she could steal a lot of those Lord of the Rings she points. she sure did. She has scored a ton of points and really has proven herself as the inner geek here. All right, so let's go all back to zero points. The fourth and final round here. Now remember, do not slam on the buzzers. All you need to do is hit the buzzers. But there is a speed round. All right, here we go. The fourth and final round. The winner of this round will face Robert Meyer Burnett for a possible chance to then get a shot at the champion Hector Navarro. It is Rachel Cushing. It is Jeremy Johns. The final round. It is a speed round. There are five questions in this round. The best of five will win this round. Now you will have, if you buzz in and you get it incorrect, then your your opponent can have the chance to answer. Is there multiple choice in this one? There is no. Not. Okay. And and if you buzz in before the question is finished being read, Rachel. we do not finish the question. Okay. Yeah. Even uh, if, even if, uh, but your opponent, we'll, if you we'll get it wrong, it, yes. the opponent will get okay. to hear the whole yeah. question. Logistics. The final round, the speed round. Who played Perry White? In Man of Steel and BVS. Uh, Jeremy yeah, Johns. That's, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. That's correct. correct. For one Jeremy point. goes in Jeremy's the lead. Jeremy's on one point. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Your second question is in the category of Lord of the Rings. What was the name of the inn that the Hobbit stopped at? Jeremy Johns. Oh, that's uh, that's the prancing pony. <laughs> Jeremy correct. Johns. Getting it two here. Jeremy Johns now. Rachel looking needs good. to answer out the next three. If Jeremy Johns hits the next one, he has won the game. <laughs> What race is Jar Jar Binks? Jeremy John. And your winner! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's done it! The Joker, Jeremy John! Wow! wow. Rachel Dude. Cushing has nothing to hold her head with that speed round, John. Uh, it, uh, it's out of nowhere. Rachel had a commandingly, she was devastating for the those first three rounds, especially that wheel round. When you come into the last round there, it's all even. And Jeremy, he found it somewhere to, to get those answers at the right time. So Jeremy Johns is now one and one, and he's going to now be playing Robert Meyer Burnett. That is going to be a very interesting, a one-on-one -on -one match, a five-round match between the two of those guys to determine who is the next contender for the championship. You were right. Jeremy is a very competitive player. He knew his stuff, man. He was good. He was really good in those first two rounds, and that's what got him to the final. But I'm telling you right now, there are a couple of guys out there by the name of Hector and Robert who are shaking in their boots at the prospects of facing a Rachel Cushing at oh, some point. Absolutely. Because she caught a raw deal bit of there in the final round. Just Jeremy had those answers right there. But I'm telling you, these two competitors can take out any of those guys. This is going to get interesting. I think this is the same type of scenario that when, when Hector Navarro lost in the spectacular. Yes. He had scored so many points that everyone will say, well, he deserves a shot. He deserves a shot. I have a feeling that we're going to hear the same thing about Rachel Cushing because I think she, what a round, that that wheel round by Rachel Cushing. But enough about Unbelievable. this. We're going to hear from some of the competitors right now who are standing with Emma Fife. Here you go. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Emma Fife here with your new inner geekdom contender, Mr. Oh. Jeremy Johns. I like being a contender. That's, that's what like you the, are. That's the farthest I've ever gotten on any kind of competition whatsoever. It's uh, yeah, it, it feels really good though. Like I'm still jacked up. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things. I'm not going to come down from this for like a day and a it half. It was a good comeback for you today because yes. you previously participated yeah. in the inner geekdom mm -hmm. in the Schmodown spectacular, and you didn't make it quite as far. I did not make it quite as far. So when I beat, the, uh, when it got past that round, I was like, okay, now I'm in the surplus. Mm -hmm. And then when it was the last round, I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is it, you know? And it's a lightning round. There's a lot of emotions and thoughts. You just can't, you just gotta relax. You have to take a breath, step back, relax, and then you're good. Except there was no breaths or relaxing in that speed no, round there, no. man. You just jumped right in. Christian rattles it all off like a, like, like a master. Like, it's just like lightning coming at you. So you just have to like push the buzzer, hope to God you're right. Um, and I was pretty confident 
confident I was right. I'm usually, uh, John Campia spilled the beans out there. I do come for fun. It's all about fun. But when you get that deep into it, it becomes competitive. And now it, like, it's like getting bitten by a bug. Now I've won. Now I want to do another one. You know what I mean? I mean, and you get the chance to do another one. <sighs> Robert Meyer Burnett. Robert Meyer Burnett. He's waiting for you. He's no joke either. It's kind of like, all right, when you're playing a Zelda game or a game and you see that huge monster, you're like, I got to beat that thing mm -hmm. in order to advance. Here we are. Take a breath. Hope all my gear is what I need. And you just go in there hoping the fairy will bring you back to life and you can actually uh, actually take him down. I'm looking forward to it. I love Robert Meyer Burnett. He's my brother in Hot Toys Collectibles. But in the end... There can only be one champion of the Great Pacific Northwest, so I gotta take him on. And you think it's gonna be you? Well, <laughs> yeah. God, that was so unconfident. <laughs> Absolutely, it's gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would it be? With the curtain cape of glory and the shirt of Power and Rangers, the feet of yeah. all the houses of, of Hogwarts University, my BB-8 socks and my lightsaber and my Joker mug, I will take on Robert Meyer Burnett. In the most friendly way possible. I mean, I have to say, I do want to see Star Wars bed sheets cape take on Robert Meyer Burnett's lovely brocade coat that he's yes. been seen sporting lately. It's going to oh. be a very fashionable matchup. What is your strategy <laughs> going forward to take him down? Epic training times? Uh, yeah, just like a montage of just nerdy movies. Like, oh, I have them all on Blu-ray. Let's just watch them, watch them, watch them. Yeah. I mean, my uh, when I'm there, my my tactic my strategy will be what it was today it's like if you go there to have fun great win or lose you had fun but if i start seeing it as a huge competition i get inside my own head i can't do that it's just you relax answer the questions have fun doing it and you know what today like in tron i fight for the user and good one well, congratulations to you, Jeremy Johns. You. A very well-deserved win today. You took down some <sighs> very tough competitors. They were super tough. Oh, my gosh, dude. Like, I was like, there's, all right, in the, what was it, the third round? Mm -hmm. It was the third round. I was like, this, she's out of control. She's like, out of control. Oh, yeah, Rachel answered really every Harry Potter good. question. I was like, all right, this is, the, she, she, I feel, is the one to beat. If she's ever on another Schmodown, look out. I agree. Great job uh, to her and again to you, Jeremy. We'll be right back with some more of our Inner Geekdom competitors. All right, we are here with the entire Nerds Watch, but particularly Rachel, the Crusher Cushing. What an incredible performance today. Thank you, Emma. I'm really, really happy with how I did. I'm happy with how Michelle did. Like, that was just a ton of fun. <laughs> I think it was, a, it was a good match for the Nerds Watch all around. Very classy. Ken escorting the ladies out onto the battlefield. Which uh, we appreciate. Yeah, mm -hmm. as, as he should, as he should. And I, I think that we've proved today here that uh, the Nerds Watch isn't messing around. That Lord of the Rings category was insane. And I mean, you stole so many questions. Like, what a great strategy. We got lucky. Jeremy knows his Lord of the Rings too. I just figured out the buzzers before he did <laughs> and then he figured it out in the last round. But it was it was a good strategy because we knew Inman wasn't as strong with the fantasy categories. It was definitely the right choice. Now the Harry Potter category, you were no mm. slouch in either. I am very good in the fantasy categories. <laughs> so that worked out very well. And I have to agree with you. I do feel like for some reason you you were crushing that bus that buzzer the first time around, and then it just kind of got away from you in that final speed round. Round three has turned into can you anticipate the question? It's about buzzing in before they even finish it, and I just couldn't get there fast Jeremy enough. Jeremy just had over nothing to lose, essentially. True enough. Yeah. I can still hold my head high for what I played. That is absolutely true. Yeah, I felt like you knew the answers to those questions. I absolutely <laughs> did. Absolutely. They just didn't get to the finish of those questions. So, I mean, good for Jeremy. He, he was riled up. He was ready to go. And he hit that buzzer really freaking fast. Well, this is certainly, I'm sure, not the end of uh, your appearance here on the Movie Trivia Showdown. Absolutely not. I think it was Perry Nemiroff who says this thing gets addictive. <laughs> like, the more you're in front and the more you compete, the more you want to be in front and compete. And so that is absolutely me. We're here to bring heroes back. And, yeah, I'm ready to go, whatever my next matches. Who would you like to take on next? Well, I wouldn't mind sticking in the geekdom territory. I know I don't have my shot at Robert Meyer Burnett just yet, but maybe, you know, Inman and I could go at it at some point. And, uh, and I would like to make my debut in singles at some point soon, too. So I mean, Inman talks a big game. That's a match that I would like to see. Michelle, how about you? Are you going to you gonna come back? Oh, man, I hope so. I just have so many movies to rewatch before I do. <laughs> <laughs> you can get like an 80s training montage of just I you do. Like, catching up on films. Just me just sitting on the couch, just like eating <laughs> popcorn yeah just it's like any kind of meme all the dcu all of marvel just bring it on well again congratulations michelle and particularly to you 
Rachel, fantastic appearance on the behalf of the Nerds Watch today. All right, we are here with one half of Team Trek, Jason Inman, representing Next Gen. He makes it so. It's a, it's a good shirt, I have to say. Thank you, thank you. And a, a good performance on your behalf today. Well, you know, Emma, you, luck is a big part of the Schmodown. It's very true. And I have finally learned my place in the Inner Geekdom uh, Tournament. I'm the Sam Levine. <laughs> Every time I go out, I'm going to get screwed by the wheel because um, I watched the final round. Mm -hmm. I would have been uh, pace for pace with Jeremy. So I'm glad he, I, I'm glad Jeremy won. Uh, now I'm rooting for Robert Meyer Burnett. Oh. But it's all good. Uh, you know, the best geek should have that belt. And that's all I want to see out of this entire tournament. I want the best geek. And I think Rachel, I'm very look, I'm looking forward to challenging her because she was amazing today. She really knows yeah. her stuff. Now, mm -hmm. I do think if you'd gotten a category on the wheel that you knew, you would have been just as impressive. Well, I heard that they debated about saying Star Wars. And if they would have said Star Wars, uh, uh, we would have had a different result. So, so you're saying if it had gone Star Wars, then it would be you who's going up against Robert Meyer Burnett. Oh, indeed. Indeed. I would have made it so. <laughs> Talking a big game there, Jason <laughs> Inman. So, so what's, what's, uh, what's your plan next? How, how are you going to get in on this uh, Inner Geekdom belt that you want well, so badly? Well, the thing is is that uh, uh, I don't need it from me. I just need the best geek to have it. That's okay. all I care. The, the, only, the only reason I made the big deal about it is because I watched the first Inner Geekdoms, and you're a geek as well, I assume mm -hmm. you know, and I thought there were a lot of really just softball questions, you know, mm -hmm. very softball questions to, like, bring in a true geek. And I, that's, what, that's why I was so impressed by Rachel. Uh, my plan is is that I'm going to study the hell out of Lord of the Rings uh, <laughs> because then nobody's going to be able to use that against me. And I'm going to make sure that I need to match my Harry Potter right up with Rachel. And so Rachel is who you would want to take on next then. Indeed. Rachel is uh, 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 she's another gladiator of magnificent abilities. So like, I want to go against her, sharpen my shield a little mm -hmm. bit, sharpen my sword a little bit, uh, silently vanquish her, bury her nicely, and then move on to the next match. Right. Defeat her so that you can prove to yourself that you could be one geek to rule them all. Ooh, nice pun. Mm -hmm. Just make it in those so. Lord of the Rings references. There you go. Wait, wait, well, is that from Lord uh, of the Rings? Yeah, one ring to rule them all. I didn't know that. Okay, great. Well, Jason Edmund, everybody, <laughs> great job today, and uh, we look forward to seeing who you take on in the future. All right, we are here with Hal Rudnick. Hal, what happened out there today, man? I don't know. I am racked with shame. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, sometimes you take an L, and I took a pretty hefty one. Uh, there's no, there's no way around it. There are no excuses to be made. Um, I feel that is a, uh, you know, that is a poorer showing than I'm capable of. I mean, it could not have gone worse. Uh, you know what? Um, I wish I was like on like pain meds or something, right? And like I could blame it on like a hallucination, like I saw gremlins crawling on the table. But no. Uh, just a straight up L, Emma. Well, it's been a while since you've participated in the Schmodown, and you know, yeah. the, the lights and the music, it, it can get a little crazy up there. The, the hot lights and the music can get in your head, man. <laughs> it can get in your head. Because I know that you know your stuff, Hal. Like, you, you're a geek through and through, for yeah, sure. Yes, I mean, I, I, man, I, I love this stuff. I just, yep, uh, sometimes you take a swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. But I had fun, and it was a great match to watch. Um, everyone was very impressive. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Jason and Rachel go up against each other. Jeremy was great. Michelle Boyd had a great showing. So, uh, you know what? At least I lost to some strong competition. That is very true. Would you ever want to get back in there and get a chance at redemption? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm like more the uh, general movie trivia is uh, okay. more of my expertise. But I would love another chance at the inner geekdom maybe against you. Ooh, possibly. But, um... <laughs> But I, I feel like um, the biggest geeks made it to the final round. But uh, I would love a chance to redeem myself one day. Well, way to uh, bow out with dignity, Hal Rudnick. Thank you. Uh, and I'm sure that we will see you in the Schmodown again sometime oh, very I, soon. I thought about bowing out without dignity and just oh. coming in middle fingers blazing. But then I realized, no, I lost of my own accord. Well, I think you made the superior <laughs> choice. Thank you. I'm loving the words from Jeremy Johns. He wants to play Robert Meyer Burnett. And I also, the fact that Rachel Cushing, you know, this speed round kind of got to her, but she was very happy with how she did. And 
she did great. The nerds watch really showed up. You know, one. the inner geekdom idea was a great idea. Thank but you. But today, oh. the division actually came to life. Yeah. We now have a true, legit division here yeah. now with some very strong competitors. This is going to get interesting moving forward. I'm even saying, look, at putting on my promoter hat, I think, how would you guys like to see a Jason Inman versus Rachel Cushing one-on-one -on -one inner geekdom match? <laughs> I mean, right, right then and there. I mean, that match alone would be something to watch. That, that would be incredible. But just going off the point of what you said there as far as uh, the, it's a league now. Okay, guys, what do you think of the match? Go ahead and comment who's going to win. Will it be Jeremy Johns or will it be Robert Meyer Burnett? Make sure you comment and tell us exactly what you think. Make sure you go on to the Movie Trivia Showdown Facebook page. Tons of competitors over there talking to you guys. You guys get involved, stats, all of that. And make sure like and comment this video. That's how important it is to keep getting more matches like this, more matches like we had this past week with the Power Rangers match. Keep on doing that. Thank you so much for John Campia. I'm Christian Harloff, and we'll see you next time. Oh, hello, and welcome to the Inner Geekdom Fantasy Update. I'm your, the guy that talks about it. Um, so after doing all of the calcul calculating and careful tabulation, if you had Jason Inman, he scored 14 total points, but you cut that in half, you get seven. Rachel Cushing scored a total of 21 points. You cut that in half, you get 10.5 points. Michelle Boyd, if you had her in fantasy, you get six points, cut that in half, you get three. If you can't do the math, you should go back to third grade. <laughs> if you had Jeremy Johns, he scored a total of 17 points. You cut that in half, you get 8.5, but you also get a five point winning for bonus. 13.5 total points for Jeremy Johns. That's your inner geekdom fantasy update. I'm Josh McCuga, playing a geek character. I'm sorry if I offended anybody out there. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.